Sometimes in this world, smart people say stupid things. When it comes to professional wrestling, I've always viewed Chris Jericho as a very, very smart person. But even he is not immune from saying some really dumb, stupid, idiotic things. It's just the way it works sometimes. And it's kind of disappointing with Jericho because... This is a guy who I've respected for years. This is a guy that's done so much in the business, even when he had a lot of the odds stacked against him based off of the company he went to at the time that he went with all the talent that was there. He should have had no business becoming the big star that he ultimately became. And it is a credit to his work ethic, his determination, his drive, his talent, his abilities, all of that, that he became the big star that he did. And I have also had a tremendous amount of respect over the years for Jericho for his unselfishness, his willingness to be a team player, to put over guys to the point where he puts too many guys over too frequently where it loses the appeal of Jericho putting somebody over because he's put almost everybody over. He's been unselfish to a fault. And some guys, <laughs> John Cena, could have learned something from him along the way. But that doesn't totally excuse saying some stupid things. It's the same guy that a couple of years ago said the WWE doesn't intentionally sabotage anybody, which we all know is a complete load of shit. See Enzo. See Baron Corbin. See so many other guys over the years. See what they did to Kofi Kingston after Randy Orton got pissed at him. Stupid fucking stupid. It literally took years for Kofi Kingston to recover. And he still has not sniffed the world title scene. So don't tell me the WWE doesn't sabotage people. That's just dumb, and I hope nobody believes that. And I really don't think deep down anybody does, do they? But it appears that Chris Jericho isn't done saying stupid things. It's kind of disappointing coming from a guy like Jericho because here was a guy that I thought would always give you the real deal and kind of keep it honest. Um, but in recent years, it seems like he's gotten a little bit more defensive about things. Um, he's a guy now that almost comes across as kind of a corporate shill. And with the things he said in particular about Roman Reigns, I don't know what's worse. Is the fact that he's possibly just a corporate shill now and he softened so much as he's gotten into his 40s and his dad bod and his bod Jovi hair? Or does he really actually truly believe this? I don't know which one is worse. But let me go over some of what Chris Jericho said about Roman Reigns in a recent Sports Illustrated interview. And I'll kind of give you my reaction to it. First quote, for whatever reason, it's the cool thing to boo Roman Reigns, just as it was the cool thing to boo John Cena, just as it was the cool thing to boo The Rock. Okay, first, some of the booing of Roman Reigns ties into the perceived and real force of Roman. Now, a couple of years ago, I talked about how it's BS for fans to be talking about how Roman's being forced when it's Seth Rollins who won the money in the bank. It's Seth Rollins who walked out of WrestleMania with the world championships. It's Seth Rollins who was aligned with Triple H. Yes, they would do things with Roman Reigns, but that was a push, not a force. What they did with Seth Rollins was a force, similar to what was done a decade previously with Randy Orton. Some of what they did with Roman Reigns was similar to what they had done with Batista. That's a push, building a guy up, not a force. Big difference. But now you look at it, and you can clearly see that Roman is being forced. It doesn't matter what the fans are going to say. They are going to continue to push him as a top guy, even if some of the business metrics indicate he's not that strong of a top guy. So that is a real force in terms of positioning him as that Cena replacement as a prop for WWE. Some of it has to do with the obvious flaws in the guy, especially from a promo standpoint. Now, granted, especially from the hardcore fans, this is the same community that let Randy Orton pass for his horrible mic skills for a decade just because he wasn't Cena. But ultimately, Roman knows he's going to be a big dog in that company for a long time. Get to work and get better at your craft. There's no excuse for that. And that's a very obvious flaw over-reliance on the Superman punch and some other things. But he needs to work better at being a character. He needs to work more at getting better on the microphone. But to sit there and say uh, about it was a cool thing to boo Cena, Cena had so many reasons, and still does, to legitimately not like the character, not like the individual. 
all those years of being the exact same and never freaking changing, that's not a redeeming quality. That's boring and predictable as piss. All the people that he buried over the years and still is burying to this day, the corniness of so many things involving his character, uh, some of the foolish things he does in terms of the facials that he makes and the reactions that he makes that really undercut the seriousness of a moment, the way he always tries to make sure that he makes the other guy that he's with look inferior to him. There are plenty of reasons to hate Cena. And, and, and let's put it this way. Part of the reason Roman gets booed now is because Cena sucks so much for so many years that just the mere thought of getting a Samoan John Cena, a John Cena 2.0, is enough for people to instantly hate Roman Reigns no matter what. No matter what. Even though Roman Reigns is vastly better in the ring for a community of wrestling fans that loves the in-ring action above all else, the mere thought of Roman being another John Cena gets him booed more than anything else. But then to bring The Rock up into this is just stupid. This is providing improper and misleading context. The Rock was brought in as this kind of white bread vanilla baby face, and it was horrible. Oh, look at Rocky Maivia. There's a blue chipper McMahon. He looked like a blue chipper. The gimmick they gave him to start off with absolutely sucked. Eventually, the fans turned on it because they were looking for something different at the time. And this was the mid-90s and the business was changing and WWE wasn't changing with the times at that moment. But guess what the WWE eventually did? They went where the crowd was taking them, the die, Rocky, die chance. They turned the Rock heel, and guess what? He got over correctly as a heel, and then eventually transitioned into being a correctly over babyface. He became one of the biggest stars in the history of the business. John Cena never did that. The company has not done that with Roman Reigns. So to throw the Rock in there as a comparison is completely and totally misleading because they're not comparable situations. What else? He also said, Roman Reigns might be the best wrestler in the company. And I'm telling you that because if people are interested in what you're doing, whether they're booing or whether you're cheer they're cheering, they're still going to pay money to see you. Clearly, Chris has been listening too much to the WWE slash Vince McMahon propaganda machine and the spin zone that they have for the past several years. This was used in large part as an excuse for never truly getting Cena over as a babyface. And, and let's make this clear. When you were trying to present a guy as a hero, which they really tried to do with Cena, and they kind of do with Roman Reigns, but not quite to the same degree. But there's some of those elements at play. But again, not nearly to the level of Cena. And after over a decade of doing it, you still can't get fans to break down, cave in, and submit. That means that you're doing something wrong. And also, if your so-called alleged top heel, hero excuse me, ends up really, on all intents and purposes, being your top heel, that's not good. And stop pretending like it is. That's a departure from reality within that wrestling sports entertainment bubble on so many different levels. And this whole argument about Roman Reigns might be the best wrestler in the company, is just, that's just complete crap. I'm going to try to totally bury your hate on the guy. I'm just saying, best wrestler in the company, based off of what measurement? I mean, really. And maybe your argument would hold a little more water if the audience didn't continue to decrease with Roman at the top, just like it did so massively with John Cena at the top for over a decade. If your ratings were going up with Roman and in Roman segments, and he was your top merch seller, and the live event attendance was always on point and you sold out so quickly every time a Roman Reigns or a John Cena was on the card, it's a different story. But you don't have those factors at play, so you really don't have a lot of legs to stand on here. And is this whole thing of WWE trying to make less of the heel and face dynamics and... Is there any coincidence that as they've tried to somewhat lessen the heel and face importance in the heel and face dynamics, that business has suffered somewhat? Now, granted, some of this could be due to the hardcore and internet wrestling fans and be, being really, really hard to create the type of baby face you want because no matter what you can do in some cases, such as a Roman Reigns, such as a John Cena, if they don't want to cheer him, they're not going to cheer him no matter what you do, good, bad, or otherwise. 
But then the last thing that Jericho said maybe just irked me as much as anything else. It was like the epitome of stupidity. I wouldn't change it right now in reference to what WWE is doing with Roman. Obviously, the boss has decided Roman is going to be a tweener. It's like football or baseball or hockey. Not everybody's going to cheer for the same team. As long as you're making noise and Roman's not stale. First off, Roman's stale. There's not a lot of pop or wow factor with him. But he is not unique or alone in that case. The vast majority of this roster and the product as a whole is stale. To say that Roman's not stale? Mm, I don't know about all that. He's going to be a tweener. Is that really a conscientious decision by Vince? Or is it the fact that these guys don't know how to get over somebody like a Roman Reigns because they never were able to get over Cena 100% the right intended correct way and we just throw him into that tweener hat, that tweener fold because we could then spin it and say, oh, look how controversial he is. No matter whether you boo, whether you cheer, everybody's excited. There's pandemonium he'll deny. And that's, again, just complete crap. Getting rid of heel and face dynamics might work if you have like a Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels builder for a WrestleMania 25 or WrestleMania 26. Because their story there, the characters are so incredible, the performers are so great, and you have a feeling that the matches are going to be top-notch stuff, that heel face really doesn't matter. Austin Rock, even though you could do heel face, or you could do both of them face and it really didn't matter, or Hogan Warrior, you had both of them as babyface, you didn't really need to do heel, heel and face. In those situations, it doesn't matter. But I'm also talking about Shawn, Ta Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan, The Ultimate Warrior. Six guys that Roman Reigns is not and may very well never be. And to compare it to sports, especially from somebody like a Chris Jericho, whose dad played in the NHL, I thought this was a completely ridiculous comparison. In sports, home teams are usually massively over as baby faces and... On the flip side, the road teams are massively over his heels. Like, imagine having a Bears-Packers game in Soldier Field, and the crowd split 50-50. Sure, you are going to have Packer fans there. That's just a reality of it. But it might be an 80-20 split. Bears fans 80%, Packers fans 20%. So yes, you'll have a small vocal minority of fans in that stadium that are cheering for the Packers, but the overwhelming and much louder overall majority of the fans there are Bears fans, and they're going to be cheering for the home team. Flip side, go to Lambeau Field. The Packers are massively over as baby faces. The Bears are over as heels. They're the hated ones. So... In general, with sports, you don't have that type of split crowd dynamic. That's just a dumb statement. And this whole thing about, well, as long as they're reacting, that's all that matters, is complete crap. Again, this was an artificially manufactured argument by the WWE in direct response to all of the years of Cena getting booed out of so many buildings by male adult fans. That doesn't mean that a lot of kids didn't like him, or a lot of women didn't like him, or even some adult men, for whatever reason, didn't like him. But this was, again, a direct spin on the fact that they couldn't 100% get Cena over as that universal top babyface. They could not. So, they changed the narrative. They changed the argument and said, it doesn't matter if you boo or you cheer. Imagine that. Look at the reaction. The people are into it. And that's just crap. Imagine in the late 90s, Austin getting a 50-50 crowd reaction. And Vince as the overbearing boss getting more cheers than boos. The whole dynamics of everything are fucked up. Hogan with Hulkamania running wild in the 80s. Imagine him being the top babyface and getting booed out of more than half of the buildings that he wrestled in. That's not good. Cena is a pretend megastar. He never was a megastar and never will be considered a megastar in my eye, in part because he couldn't fully get over the way that was intended after over a fucking decade of trying. I mean, seriously. 
and to sit there and say, well, it doesn't matter if they boo or cheer. If it doesn't matter if they boo or cheer, why does the WWE then edit out the boos on these guys when they send out uh, DVD releases and they show old matches uh, when different pay-per-views end up going on the network? They've edited Cena's crowd noise for years. They started editing Roman Reigns' crowd noise. You've seen examples of this of you on YouTube with Roman Reigns and what they did for Raw, how the WWE creatively... Uh, utilized different camera shots than what would actually was for to indicate that Roman Reigns was more popular than he really was with the adult male fans. Why does the WWE turn down the mics? Why do they edit out the boos if the reaction really doesn't matter? If it were such big reaction marks, then who gives a shit if the people boo or cheer? The fact is, is the WWE, I understand, because of their own incompetence and stupidity, puts out that very public face of one thing, but their actions indicate something entirely different. And the way they try to present Roman Reigns and the way that for years they try to present John Cena indicates that they still view them as a babyface, even though, again, the WWE tries to spin it. They try to spin it because they failed. And ultimately, this whole thing about, I wouldn't change anything with Roman. Roman's the top guy right now. Shouldn't the top guy be the top draw? And by what measurement is Roman Reigns the top draw? Merch sales? Absolutely not. Live event attendance? I don't think so. Television ratings? Really? If he was a top draw on television ratings, then you would see a big spike in segments and matches that he was involved in on Raw each week. You would also see ratings that wouldn't have declined as much as they have with him at the top of the scene over the past couple of years. The point is to sit there and pretend like everything's working just fine. To pretend that everything is going as planned as intended and that there's no reason to change anything. It's just complete stupidity of the highest order. And it's disappointing to hear people like Chris Jericho, who should know better, and either A, do, but they're shilling for WWE, or B, don't, and again, I don't know which one is worse, saying stuff like this that is so frustrating for somebody like me. Because to me, in this particular case, somebody like Chris Jericho should know a lot better than me. And some of you will reply in the comments that he does. Because you're Jericho fans, because you think kissing his ass means that he's going to like you or respect you, and none of that's necessarily true. But again, from a logic standpoint, so much of what Chris Jericho said in that interview about Roman Reigns was intellectually misleading, was lacking proper context, and was just flat out WWE corporate spin bullshit. And I'm disappointed that Chris Jericho would say something that is even more idiotic than WWE doesn't sabotage its wrestlers. <sighs> Unbelievable.